And we are ready to hear from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And as we prepare to receive him, I give you these words that are found in the torchlight of America. Moses and Aaron set two signs before the people, one of life and a blessing, and the other of death and a cursing. He said, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan say the same to you and I and to America today. Will you help me to receive God's man, God's servant, our dear beloved minister and friend, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. All praises due to Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his creation, for his prophets, and the scriptures which they brought to guide human beings. We thank Allah for Moses and the Torah, for Jesus and the Gospel, for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of Allah. I am, as a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, eternally grateful to Allah for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, who came among us and raised from among us the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and gave him to us as a divine leader, teacher, and guide. I believe him to be the Messiah that the world has been looking for. In their names, I greet you my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace, we say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. I am very grateful to Allah for the presence of each of you, for those who are in the ministry, in the imamate, those of you who are activists and leaders, and those who are just interested in knowing what we have to say. I uh, am anxious to get this subject matter over to you, and I want you to pay very strict attention to every word I have chosen as a subject today the divine destruction of America. Can she avert it? America is the greatest nation on this earth and the greatest nation in the last 6,000 years. But America and her people, which includes you, face divine destruction.
the question is can she avert it in the Holy Quran in the seventh surah or chapter in the 34th verse it reads and every nation has a term so when its term comes they cannot remain behind the least while nor can they precede it if every nation has a term does America have a term and if so what is the time a term is a time or period to which something lasts it is a period of time to which limits have been set conditions or stipulations limiting what is proposed to be granted or done so if every nation has a time to which some limits have been set what time is it for America and what limits have been set in the book of revelations the 13th chapter the 18th verse it reads here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count or calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man six hundred three score and six some translations say it is the number of a man six 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 the word calculate is trying to teach us that we must ascertain the beast and the man by mathematical methods we have to compute now what this number means here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count calculate the number of the beast the beast and his term has to be calculated for the beast number is the number of a man 600 three score and six so we're dealing with a man that has characteristics like a beast the book of revelations closes or is the closing of the bible it talks about four beasts one of those beasts more terrible than the others hmm. and that beast was taken and utterly destroyed and its body given to the burning flames now you have a beast being destroyed and you have fire and you have to calculate time now the honorable Elijah Muhammad is a principal helper in this calculation and most of us as black people in America have not understood the honorable Elijah Muhammad nor have we understood his value to us to get us through what's about to come down on America now either Elijah Muhammad is a man from God or he is not if he is not then we can dismiss me and what I have to say but I don't think that you can dismiss me and if you 
And if you cannot dismiss the student, then you certainly cannot dismiss the teacher. Now, we have these numbers, 600, three score, and six. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that what we are entering into now is the judgment of the present world and its order. This world belongs to the Caucasian people. The number of the beast and the number of the man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the beast is a man, but the number of the beast is compared to the number of the original man, which is also on the number six. The Holy Quran and the Bible teach us that God made man on the sixth day, I think it was. The Holy Quran, well, the Bible says he made everything in six days. The Holy Quran says that Allah created the heavens and the earth in six periods of time. So six is the number of the originator and six is the number of the beast. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the white race is not a natural man but a man that came through a process of birth control through a system of grafting. You can take it or leave it. The white people are not an ancient people. They are a new people on our earth. So the first six, which is 600, could refer to the 600 years that it took on the island of Patmos or Pilan to graft this new people out of the original. Some of the foolish among us make mockery of these teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I was being interviewed by a Harvard scholar, Dr. Henry Louis Gates, and Dr. Gates was saying how brilliant he thought the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was to craft this um, mythology to get so many people to believe in this mythology. And I said to Mr. Gates, I said, sir, it's interesting to me that rather than give Elijah Muhammad credit for having received revelation, you would say he made up something that caught the fancy of the ignorant. Here's a man that went to the fourth grade of school and completed it, but he crafted a mythology that has mystified the scholars and the scientists. Now, either white people were here and they didn't come from us, or they did come from us. And their scholars are saying today that the original people are the black people of the earth. They are bearing witness to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. 
So then if you cannot produce a white man naturally, then what was the process by which he was brought on the earth? And for what purpose was the white man brought here? This is not racist teaching. This is actual facts. And before we leave today, before we leave today, you're going to have to deal with what I tell you. It may keep you up all night, all tomorrow, for a week or a month, but you're going to have to deal with what I tell you today. Now look, Jesus said to the Jews, I know you. You are of your father, the devil. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. So if the father was a liar and a murderer from the beginning, then lying and murder was born into the very nature of the people. Listen. The island of Patmos or Pilon was a womb. And whatever goes on outside the womb affects the nature of that which is being formed in the womb. If lying and murder, murder of the darker, saving the lighter, marrying the lighter on to the lighter, murdering the darker, saving the lighter, and this went on for 600 years until a pale people was produced. Listen, human beings, but a different kind of human being. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And let us give them power and dominion. That's how the white man got power. It was given to him divinely, but a certain limit and term was set on the white man's rule. You can take it or leave it, but I believe you're going to take it today. was their term limited. It was limited because their rule would be contrary to the eternal principles of truth and justice upon which the universe is based. And since the universe is based on the eternal principles of truth and justice, no unjust world can have any permanence in a universe balanced by justice. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Good, good. So then, if white folk created or made a world that is unjust, lies and murder and stealing at the root of this world, then this world can have no permanence in God's universe of truth. So there would come a time when this world would be judged and destroyed. We are on the same page? That is attested to in the Quran, in the Bible, that this world was doomed from its inception to be destroyed. All right, so we have 600, meaning the years it took to produce this people out of the original. There were 60,000 human beings, black human beings involved in that process. And the last six represents two things. I'll get to the second thing that it represents later. But the first thing that the six represents is 6,000 years. After he had gone 6,000 years, 
his time is up, then God comes and the process of removal of his power and authority and himself begins. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that this six also could mean 60 years of grace not to exceed 70 which means that on the time of God's coming and raising up a person to warn and deliver the message from that moment grace begins I'll get to that a little later and uh, we're going to calculate some time here now the both the Bible and the Quran speak of judgment and the hour and the day the day of judgment and then the hour of doom and if you look at the hour in the hour you have 60 minutes and in the minute you have 60 seconds so the man whose hour has come is the man of six the doom the hour now in the day of judgment has arrived he said no man knoweth the hour but the father that means the hour of total destruction and today I would like to inform you of how this destruction will take place and I can only pray that you and I won't be in it now in the book of revelations 14th chapter the 6th and 7th verse listen to this and I saw another angel fly fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters I want to stop here with you a moment and I hope that all of you are, are ready to think today look here's another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach here is the Bible and that which Jesus was given is called Bushra or Injil which is gospel here's the book Bible is this the everlasting gospel just think is this Quran the everlasting gospel is it how do you know how do you know there got to be proof either it is or it isn't if this is not the everlasting gospel then there's a time set on these books well that's a fact But we have to know. Yes, sir. Look, brothers and sisters, neither of these books is the everlasting gospel. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I'd like to take a moment to prove it. It won't take but a moment. Yes, sir. 
in the Bible, this gospel is to be preached, right? Yes, to every nation, kindred, and tongue. But then this book says, I saw the Lamb, John talking, yes, sir. and 144,000 on another shore singing a new song. Right? This book says, Bible, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man to conceive what lies beyond the destruction of this world. So this could not be the everlasting gospel. Not this. It's good news, all right. But it's not the eternal good news. What about the Quran? Well, sorry about this. But this isn't either. The Quran only takes us up to the hereafter, the door of it, but it doesn't admit us in. And this book says, I has not seen. Ear has not heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man to perceive or conceive what lies beyond the judgment of this world. This book takes you right up through the judgment. This book takes you right up through the judgment, but the guidance of the hereafter, where there is no term limit set. That is eternal on the other side then there must be an everlasting gospel that will be preached on the other side of the destruction of this world. So a new book is coming. I want you to hear me. Now, brothers, sisters, Allah says in the Quran, that he is master of the day of judgment. Tell me something. Why should there even be a judgment? Why? I mean, is there, is there necessity for it? Many of you, my dear brothers, have been before the judges. And my dear brothers who've been before the judges, you know that these judges do not judge with justice. And some of you have been before them enough that you don't even expect justice when you go. Is that right? Now we can take our cases to court. It's natural. It's what a good citizen should do. But the judges of this world are not just judges. And because there is no real justice in this world, this is why the world is to be judged. And this is why there is a day of judgment and a limit set on America and this world. Now, what is the judgment, judgment, judgment? When you get a judgment, what does that mean? I know you know. <laughs> if anybody knows, we know. When you get a judgment, that means that a judge has rendered a decision. And that decision is called the judgment. The judgment is the ability to judge, to make a decision or form an opinion objectively, authoritatively, and wisely, especially in matters affecting action, good sense, discretion, misfortune regarded as afflicted by divine sentence is also a judgment. Also the last judgment, the final trial of all mankind, both the living and the dead, at the end of the world. 
So when we talk about judgment, we're talking about one, God's forming a decision. And God's decision comes down against America and against this world. Well, usually there's a clerk of the court, somebody that has to read the decision. Now, the judge, you know where it came from, but your eyes are fastened on the clerk. Well, what is it? And if the decision is against you, the question is, what kind of power do you have to overturn that decision? Now, God, listen carefully now, has sent down his decision. He intends to wipe out America. I'm going to say it again. I said, God has sent down his decision. His intention is the total destruction of America. Now, I know you say you're an American. And there's nothing wrong with that. Say what you will. But the question is, is America good? And by what standard? And if America has exceeded the limits, then the question is, after God has sent down his decision, somebody has to make it known, publish the decision. There is no appeal. Don't have to waste time. But there is a way to get out from it. It's very narrow. It's very limited. But you can avoid it. And I want to tell you how sometime this afternoon. Now, what is your position, black man, in this judgment? Whether you know it or not, you are the reason why God is judging America. Even as it was in ancient Egypt, it was the children of Israel and Pharaoh's mistreatment of them that caused God's appearance and his judgment. It was the Hebrews in Babylon, their presence and their mistreatment that caused God's judgment of Babylon. It is your mistreatment at the hands of white people that has caused God to send down his judgment on America. Now you, in your silliness, are so forgiving. White folk ain't even asked for forgiveness. I want you to hear me. White folk haven't even acknowledged that they did you wrong. They have not repented for what they did to your fathers and what they're doing to you and what they plan against your future. But God knows their thoughts, their plans, and because he knew them before they came into existence, he planned their destruction before they were born. I want you to hear me. Black people, in America, whether you want to believe it or not, are very special to the Lord of creation. Not because you've been good. 
as you know you certainly have not been good <laughs> but God has chosen people in the past who were not good but he had a purpose for them and therefore he chose them to be his people for his purpose you have been chosen to be God's people to do a very special work for God but you are all wrapped up in the people he came to destroy you want to integrate with your enemy you want to marry your enemy you are in love with your enemy so if God sends down his judgment on the enemy that you are in love with you say no God I ain't going with you if I can't bring white folk with me yes this is you some of you say to hell with you God I know there's some good white people and you start making yourself busy trying to find somebody good that you can tell God see you're wrong God you remind me of Abraham when the angels came to Abraham and told Abraham that they were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and Abraham said would you destroy the righteous with the wicked he said well go see if you can find 50 if you find 50 I'll spare the city he couldn't find 50 he said go back see if you can find 40 see if you can find 30 then he said go and see if you can bring me one outside of Lot and his family if you can bring me one I'll spare the city see God delays judgment so that his people will see that the people he has judged are worthy of what they're about to get do you hear me now it's not an accident that in today's times your churches are being burned down. You want to call Farrakhan Antichrist. But I'm not burning churches. I respect the church as a house of God. But somebody is burning your churches. That ain't all they're going to burn. God is going to make you cry out for the destruction of your enemy because he's going to send that enemy to destroy you because of your unwillingness to come out of her. Listen. In the book of Revelations talks about a mystery Babylon a mystery Babylon well there was an ancient Babylon that we know about but John the revelator was talking about a mystery Babylon and according to the English interpretation the word mystery means unknown uncertain obscure conceal a secret something locked up something that has not been or cannot be explained in theology it is a supposed truth of fact of great religious import which is beyond human comprehension so the scholars and scientists who translated the Bible out of its original tongues referred to a mystery Babylon 
Now, in order to understand the mysterious one, we have to know something about the known Babylon. In ancient times, Babylon under the kings Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar was the great city of idol worship and evil. She was the queen of evil, rich and well fortified. Mystery Babylon refers to a future city or a future people. No city or people answers the description better than the cities and the people of America. Oh man, a mystery Babylon. Let's look at what Revelation goes on to say. And there came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls. And he talked with me saying, come unto me here and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. That's some pretty ugly descriptive language. The judgment of a great whore that sits on many waters. Waters here stands for people as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us. And these waters that the great whore sits on represents the power that she has over many nations and many people. Now, this whore with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and bedecked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has said and that this woman dressed in purple and scarlet color, sitting upon a scarlet colored beast, mm. with seven heads and ten horns is referring to Rome. Rome was built on seven hills. And this church that sits like a prostitute, that's what John the Revelator referred to him. And this is also what Martin Luther wrote when Martin Luther broke from the church. Martin Luther saw that great whore as the Pope. No, I, I, want, I want you to think today. Dressed in purple royalty, sitting on a scarlet colored piece. He is a beast supporting the prostitute. And the whore sits on many waters. She has power over many people, but she holds a golden chalice, and in it is filth and abominations of the earth. Boy, that's a heavy indictment 
of the so-called church. What have you done? What have you done? You have used God's name as a shield to practice dirty faith, dirty religion in his name. They came out of Europe with a cross. and destroyed the peoples of the earth and brought the peoples of the earth into subjection to the image of Caucasian people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on now. The great Roman Emperor Constantine who became a Christian originated the sign of the cross with a snake wrapping itself around that cross and the Latin words in hoc signo wind case in this sign or with this sign we conquer and with the cross they went into Europe Africa Asia and they gave people religion and took away the freedom, the justice, the equality, the raw materials of the darker people of the earth. Talk to me. Yes, With the cross, they slaughtered the native people in the Western Hemisphere. Murdered the Carib Indians. Enslaved the blacks. In the name of Jesus, you were heathens and unworthy to be looked upon as an equal to white people, so the church made you a nigger. Listen to me. Not the church of Jesus Christ, but a false church operating in Jesus' name. And every one of us that have believed in that false church are like people committing fornication with her. You're laying down with a whore. And the whore is not teaching you good manners or good morals. You are a funky, filthy, low-down people that have been made that way by your so-called Christian masters. is in the church you are not a people that Jesus can accept you are unworthy of Jesus do you think that Jesus would accept you coming to him dressed like a harlot with the heart of a harlot to me do you think Jesus would accept you as a lesbian you could come to him like that but you can't remain like that and stay in the favor of Jesus not the Jesus the true Jesus of the Bible and Holy Quran no sir do you think Jesus will accept you singing songs in the choir songs of hope but a homosexual a wine bibber a coke user come on now hell no hell no maybe the church will accept you but christ condemns 
this crap that's going on in his name. A mystery Babylon full of abomination and filth. She's the mother of whores. Babylon, that wicked city, her merchant ships went to all the ports of the earth and in her were the Jews. And she mistreated the Jews, the Hebrews. And because of her mistreatment of them, one day there was some handwriting seen on the wall. These words, mene, mene, tikel, yufasin, meaning your kingdom has been weighed in the balance and found wanting. This is America. She does some good things. I won't say that she doesn't. But she's low down and filthy. You will accept her because she's made you like she is. You are not even qualified to even say what is good anymore because you judge good by what is good to you personally. And if America lets you carry on your filth and your foolishness, she's good. In America, you're free to be a freak. But you're not free to be a righteous person. The righteous are persecuted while the wicked can have their way. She's a powerful country. But she's very wicked. Sodom and Gomorrah looks like light stuff compared to what's going on in America. The evil that brought the flood in the days of Noah, America looks, they look like a choir boy in comparison to the evil that we are doing. You're not out of this, brothers. You're not out of this, sisters. You wrapped up in the white man. And his aim is, if I'm going down, you are the people of God, all right, but I'm going to take you down with me. That's his aim. And I'll prove it before the day is over, and then I'm through with you. I'm through with you. And what does that mean? Because there ain't no teaching going to make you better. You're so rotten that the only thing that will make you better is the chastisement of God. And because I realize that, I'm just about through teaching you anything. But I'm going to get your blood off my hands. How is God going to destroy America? What instrument you going to use? Whenever God gets ready to destroy any people, I mean, if you, if you can't take it, you can hit the door. It's all right with me. You can't run from this. It'll find you in the crack house. It'll find you in the whore house. It'll find you in the bar room. But all your crap is going to cease. Yeah. All your crap is going to cease. God is angry. He is very angry. I didn't tell you last week I was coming out because I had not planned to. But when I went home, the next day I saw something. I said, let me go. 
and get their blood off my hands. You will not hear a lot from me because it ain't necessary. I've really done my job. <laughs> yeah. This is not about entertainment. Yeah. I'm going out to hear my man today. Uh, well, what am I, a saxophone player, a singer? Is that the way you see me? I'm going out to hear my man today. What good does it do if you don't hear, you don't listen, and you don't carry into practice what you hear? What did you come to hear for? We ain't begging for ears. We're trying to get a people to change their ways. And you're not changing your ways. You hear the word while you sport and while you play. And you leave me and you go right back to the crap that you hear. So it don't make you better something is going to make you better. I'm going to tell you what that is. When God sends you a warner, he always raises the warner from among the oppressed. That's his pattern, Bible and Quran. The question is, if America is going down, and she is, who is the oppressed? It's either the Native American or you. The indigenous people. And you have suffered worse than the Native American. Because the Native American can still speak some of his language. He knows something of his history. But you have been totally destroyed. And that's why God is angry with America. And you may forgive her. But I don't know that God ever will. She's going to have to do something real big to get out from under what's coming. Question is, if America is going down, and she is. Who is the oppressed? It's either the Native American or you. The indigenous people. And you have suffered worse than the Native American. Because the Native American can still speak some of his language. He knows something of his history. But you have been totally destroyed and that's why God is angry with America and you may forgive her but I don't know that God ever will she gonna have to do something real big to get out from under what's coming I intend to make this known very clearly to America Some of you think that Farrakhan is crazy, you know. <laughs> you know, he just says these powerful things to stir things up. No, no. It's bigger than that. I got to do what I got to do to avoid Allah's wrath on me. Look at the warner that comes to the Babylon. What is the word? Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven. Don't integrate in her. Come out. Come out. Come out of her way of thinking. 
come out of her name, come out of her false worship, and come into a righteous code of conduct that will allow you and me to escape what God has purposed for her. Now, the question is, have you heard the warning? See, the Quran goes like this. Did not my reminder come to you? Did not my reminder come to you? Did you not hear a caller from among you inviting you to the truth? You heard it while you parted. You heard it while you played. You did hear. So the judgment has to deal with, did you hear? And how did you respond? You know America is wicked, and you know white people have been evil in their mistreatment of dark people all over the earth. So if God's judgment comes down on America, what do you have to say about it? Do you think God is unjust? If he says he want to save you, why don't you want to be saved? Now I'm going to show you how wicked the enemy is in his plans against you. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become a habitation of demons, and a hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. See? This modern Babylon is doing what? She's falling, brother. Her money falling. Come on now. Her money falling. You didn't love to kill each other for paper. In a few days, you see this piled up in the streets. No value to it at all you that would slaughter another human being for the face of a dead white man. You that would sell your virtue for this so you could have things and lose who and what God made you to be. Babylon has fallen, and look, she's become a hole of every foul spirit. You walk down the street, how's the spirit of the people? Look, mother, get off my street. get off my car, nigga, get up, get up. It's what you hear. This is among you, among white folk. It may not have that same thing, but it's low down and foul. They plot the takeover of governments and nations. Plot how to use food as a weapon to starve people and force them to bow down to policies and programs that are not good. A hole of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hateful bird. You know what an unclean bird is? An unclean bird is like a raven, a vulture, buzzard. You know, they live off the decaying flesh of others. This is what America has become. A house filled with foul-spirited, unclean, hateful people that feed from the decaying flesh of each other. Now, as trouble breaks out for white folk all over the world, you see them running, getting out of Africa, getting out of Asia, unclean, hateful birds. They fly into Europe, fly into America. America got her Statue of Liberty opening the door for European <laughs> immigrants 
to come in and when they come they're full of hate because they lost their possession in Africa in the Caribbean they run to America and they look at you with hate because your brother over there drove them out so America has become a cage of every unclean and hateful bird and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live luxuriously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning mystery Babylon gonna burn oh man well let's get into it now y'all all right <laughs> Now listen, brothers and sisters, I want to make a few simple points here on the Day of Atonement, the Sabbath day, and the Day of Judgment. In the Old Testament, the Jews have a day of atonement and it's the highest holy day in the Jewish calendar <laughs> and those who are Hebrews whether they're black or white observe that holy day that day of atonement was a sign not the real thing it was a sign of something I'm gonna say it again the day of atonement practiced by Jews or Hebrews all over the world is a sign of something much bigger the Sabbath that you practice that 24 hour period from sundown on the day of the sixth the night of the sixth to sundown on the seventh day is your Sabbath and you do that once a week that's not the real Sabbath that's a sign All right. let me explain you see the Caucasian was given six days so when Moses came, he gave them a reminder of their doom. He said, now six days you do your work, but in the seventh day you rest. That is a holy day that must be consecrated to God. So if you look at most of us who are Christians or Jews, we would work for six days and we would kind of raise a lot of hell you know do what you want to do six days and when I was young on the night of the sixth day which if you were a Jew it would be Friday going Friday evening going into Saturday if you were a Christian it's Saturday evening going into Sunday Saturday night mom would get the children and we all would have to bathe and get washed up and get cleaned up this was a long time ago we only took a bath once a week on them days <laughs> or if we only could take a bath once a week this time man it'd be some tough stuff around here but <laughs> but on that night mama would get your clothes ready for church on sunday and you lay your, get your suit ready and your shirt and your clean underwear. And then when Sunday morning came, it was a whole different atmosphere in the house. The family gathered. There was more a talk of uh, righteousness, you know, and family matters. And you'd get ready to go to church to attend Sunday school, then Sunday service, then you'd come back in the evening for your Vesper service or whatnot. But all of that was just a sign. 
A sign of what? See, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. So what God was giving them through Moses was this. You got 6,000 years, white folk, to raise hell on this earth. But in the 7,000 year, and this is why you have a group of people called the Seventh Day Adventists, who believe that God would come in the seventh day or the seventh thousand year from Adam. So now what you call the day, the Sabbath is really a thousand year period where the whole earth would be cleansed from the work of Satan. And it starts on the coming of the Mahdi and the Messiah or God's presence in the world. Then that millennium begins. That Sabbath begins. So you're being called now to come out of the six day work of this enemy. Take off the old man, put on the new man, take off the old clothes of an old world of lies and deceit and put on a clean garment of truth and righteousness. Come out of her. Now you ain't gonna be here a thousand years. But the work of the Sabbath has already begun. It is the day when healing takes place. Okay? What did six days of living under white folk make out of us? Do you think we need some healing? Yes, sir. I mean, look, just look at yourself. Yes, sir. We're not what we should be. Why aren't we? We've been under Satan. So the work of Jesus and the work of the Sabbath is the same work. That's why the Jews didn't agree with Jesus. They said, look, Jesus, you say you're a Jew, but look at what you're doing. You're doing some work on the Sabbath. You should not work on the Sabbath. He said, what man having a donkey that falls in the ditch wouldn't pull him out on the Sabbath day? And then in Mark it says, <laughs> the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. What does that mean? The seventh day was made for you, the original man, to clean up, to get up from the dust of the white man's world. Shake the dust off, man. Shake the shackles off and become like unto God. This is the day. Listen, listen, listen. This is the day that was made to get you up. But the white man is not, he not made for this day. This is the day that he rests. He is to die. In this thousand year period, he is to die. And the only way he can escape it is if he's born again. And I don't mean going back into the womb of black people, but his mind has to be destroyed and a new mind be put in him. And otherwise, otherwise, all of them are sentenced to death. Every white man on the earth. No, 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 no. Listen. That could be your mother. They're all under the death sentence. And you are under that sentence too. Because you've become just like them. You're just a black white man. Did you hear what I said? You ain't no black man. You are a white man in black skin because your mind has been so destroyed. The mark 
mark of the beast is in your forehead. You think like the white man. And you act like the white man. He don't have to kill you today. You do the job. You so filled with hatred for your own black self that it don't mean nothing to you to pick up a weapon to kill your own black brother. And you laugh as you smoke each other. You the white man. But you a grafted white man. You a devil. You a black devil. Playing with God. Devils in the church. Devils in the mosque. Hell raises. This is you. You ain't no good. And unless you change. The sentence of death is on us all. And before I leave today, I'm going to make you to know that you will not be alive too much longer unless you make a change. That white dress ain't going to save you. That bow tie is not going to save you. Wearing the Quran, holding the Bible, ain't going to save a damn soul. You either going to change and do right or die like you are. But death is in America now. It's what I come to tell you today, and you won't hear from me no more for a while, but I'm putting it on your mind. And you'll never be able to say, I didn't tell you. You playing with God. And he's sick of you and me and us. Now, here you have a day of atonement. It's like the Sabbath. 24-hour period? No. It's a period of time that you got and you don't have much longer. You got to get it together. It's a time, brothers, when you got to, sisters, where you got to admit that you're off course. I'm wrong, God. You got to say like the prodigal son, Father, I have sinned. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your own. You got to confess, black man, that you're wrong. And you got to make it right. And you ain't got a long time. You playing with women, making them pregnant, running away from responsibility. Did you ever think you're going to have to pay for that? You gang banging and killing your people. Did you ever think you were going to have to pay for that? Did you think you got away smoking your brother? The white man don't give a damn, but there's a God that does. There's a God that does. <laughs> the day of atonement is now. It's not a one day. You got to come clean now. You got to make a decision now. That you're going to change the way you live. And every day you have to say, well, man, I got to clean this up. Yes, sir. I got to clean this up. And you have to acknowledge where you went wrong. Yes, sir and look at the standard of what is right and then try to measure up the day of atonement is that period of grace I don't mean to be so emotional you know but I'm hurting inside because I realize now that nothing that I say is gonna make you better 
And so there's no sense in talking to you anymore. Because you want entertainment. You don't want right. You want to be able to point to white folks. And them, them, them devils. But you don't want to look at yourself. You're giving each other hell every day. You're slandering each other, lying on each other, gossiping on each other, messing in each other's families. You're doing all kinds of crap. And you don't want to change. I'm a Muslim. The hell you are. I'm a Christian. When? Who says so? We're going to have to make it right. And God is not going to accept nothing less. You can't proposition him. You can't come and look, God, let's make a deal. If you do this for me, I'll do this for you. He said, hell no. It's unconditional surrender. Either you do or I'm going to kill you. And you know what? Do you know what? You don't deserve to live on God's earth in his universe and don't want to respect the architect of your life and this universe. He won't rest until every disbeliever is off the face of the earth. Ain't got nothing to do with color. So don't think blackness is going to save you. Otherwise, Al Jolson might have made it. Al Jolson is the Jewish fella that used to make his face black and get out on one knee singing Mammy. Oh, you can paint your face black or white. It ain't about your color, baby. It's about the quality of your faith, your heart, and your willingness to make a change in your life. I'm really here today to appeal to us and to plead with you. Try and save yourself. Try and save yourself. Because some stuff is about to go down and I'd like to tell you what it is and then I'm through. You see, <clears throat> for people to say to Farrakhan that you didn't observe the Day of Atonement if you didn't observe it on the day that the scriptures of the Old Testament say you don't quite understand. You're doing by me the same thing that the old legalists among the Jews did by Jesus. <laughs> and really, you don't really understand your book. We are here to fulfill it. The day of judgment is not a 24 hour period. It has to do with a time when God's decision against all of this world comes down and he begins to work to burn it. And the fire has already started, but it will culminate in a literal fire. I want you to please hear me. The word of truth is like the fire of the sun. When it strikes, it starts burning. So really the truth itself is burning up the institutions, the lies, the world. It started a fire in you. You may not want to act right, but the fire is burning. When you know the truth, man, you're responsible. You can't play no game with God like you didn't hear. Because ain't one of you, including these little young people that's in here today, and I want you to know that God don't give a damn about how young you are. He will kill you with your young behind. Did you hear me? So don't you think because you're a child, you got some way that you can say, well, I was a child. Hell no. This book, Quran, and the Bible say he takes you in the cradle. We don't care nothing about your youth. We don't have a different law for old people and another one for young people. It's one law for all. 
And either you're going to live by it or you're going to die by it, but that's your decision. He kills children, as you soon will see. Ain't no hiding place for nobody. Not the preacher of the word, nor the hearers of the word. Ain't no hiding place. Now this last six that deals with grace. See, grace is when God renders a decision against a people, a nation, and a world where evil is such that God has found that that people or nation is wanting and he determines to destroy that people, that nation, and that world, then he raises from among the people an apostle, a messenger, a prophet to make that people aware of his judgment and his intentions. Then he gives the people time to recognize their own evil, atone, repent, and to plead for his forgiveness. And if there is no change, then even before that, after he sends the messenger, listen, he seizes the nation, the people, with distress and affliction to let you know that there's something powerful coming. He hits you and he takes it up off you. Every one of you is getting something right now. You may not even know what's happening in your life, but he strikes at you with distress and affliction to help you to humble yourself to the word that you've already heard to help you make the right decision. See, you know what the right decision is. You said, come on and submit, but you keep playing with God. I'll wait, I'll come back next week, I'll come back next year, I'll come back next month. You may not live till next month. So grace is a manifestation of favor by a superior, it's mercy, it's clemency, it's pardon, it's favor shown in granting delay or temporary immunity from destruction. Here's God sending you his intention, I'm gonna kill you. And then he delays it. Oh man, what a merciful God. I mean, just think about, we didn't do anything to deserve his mercy, but out of his love and his own nature, he pronounces the doom, then he delays it to give you time to make up your mind and to give your oppressor time to repent and change before he kills both. Now, how? Is this gonna happen now my dear brothers and sisters the reason I came today is because I wanted you to know that the chastisement of God has entered America and it will begin to afflict each and every home each and every family will be affected. And this chastisement or chastening is because God loves you and you playing with him and he wants to strike you to let you know that he can strike you. And I mean, God is so powerful. He strikes you from whence you don't expect it. And the chastisement that we are going to suffer starts with grief. <clears throat> grief over loss. Now look at you. Some of you tonight, we heard on the news the other day of a beautiful young 17 or 18 year old girl on her way home, 
She stopped by a telephone booth to make a call. She was only 200 feet from her house. And there was some people driving, shooting, and her beautiful life was snuffed out. Everybody says she was a good girl. Grief has entered into that home. See, God sometimes uses the good to show the wicked. And if you take the good, what chance do you have if you don't change? I read in the paper the other day a man on the far south side owned a store. That man had the money, proceeds, and he had it in a bag, and I guess he was putting it in the trunk of his car. And two of our brothers, black men, went to rob him. They could have taken the money, but they killed him, a man with a family. But they don't care. They're cold. They're heartless. Every day you hear stories like this. Some of them make the news and others don't make the news at all. But it's happening and grief is now coming into the homes. You have a beautiful son, a beautiful daughter, all of a sudden you find them on crack. And you gotta handle your crack son or your crack daughter and all the lies that they tell and the things that they do and the things that they steal and take to keep their habit up. Here are preachers in the pulpit preaching the word of God and then slipping out getting coke. I mean, doctors, the dentists, People of high station working in your mouth and coking. Working on your head and coking. What's happening to you? See? You really are playing with your life. And you know what? When I heard about that little girl and I read the paper about that poor brother, I said to myself, I'm through. I'm through teaching these people. I'm going to ask God to bring his wrath down. I'd rather see you dead than to see you continue like you are. And if God will whip you and make you better, then the prayers of the righteous will have availed much. But you know, whenever a servant of God, and I am one, stands in front of you, he stands between you and God's chastisement. You really don't know who I am. And I don't bother to talk like this. But damn it, I am telling you, man, you're not going to play with me. God is going to kill you. Look, man, woman, boy, girl, Aaron, the priest of Moses, stood between Jehovah and the chastisement of the people. Moses was the go-between. Jesus, Muhammad, these men of God stand there calling you to change and delaying God's wrath. These men are the grace of God to you. But when you reject the man and then plot to kill that which is your grace.
been to hell with you. Kill them all. Ain't no sense in breaking down because hell, I want you to understand what you're into. I really didn't come here today to do nothing but make you aware of God's aim and what he will do to you if you don't change or me or us. Some of you, you say you love your children, but you're liars. You don't love your children the way you act because you're sentencing your children to death by your own foolishness. If you love your children, you would strive to be right. If you love your children, you try to set a better example for them. If you love your children, you would be careful what you say and what you do. My dear family, the Bible says that this grief that God is going to bring as chastisement, it will be such that when day comes, you wish it was night. And when night comes, you will wish it was day. And it said you will be in such a bad state that you will want to die. And yet death will flee from you. God is going to hold you in it, won't let you die until he's ready to take you out. You're going to see people barking like dogs. Mm, mm, mm. I have some notes that I took. I'm going to give you the year in a minute. From the Honorable Elijah Muhammad when I was his minister in Boston as I was just made his minister <clears throat> in New York, September 26th, 1965, before many of you were born. And in these notes, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad lays out the destruction and then he told us, don't teach it. Because if you teach it, the enemy will kill you outright. But it's time now. And I really don't care what the enemy wants to do to me. So I'm going to tell it all today. And if you can take it, these are notes that are 30 years old. 65. 96, 31 years from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I want you to hear me. He said, America is a preserved area. No foreign nation will destroy America lest they get the credit. God will do it himself. He said America is number one on God's list to be destroyed. He talked about the four beasts. America, England, Germany, Italy. These are four white nations that have acted with great wickedness against the darker people of the world. Bear with me. He says, the more you fight against Elijah, the more Allah makes perfect the work of Elijah. 
and that's the same with me the more they fight me the more God makes perfect his work through me he said we will make the truth so plain that a fool will find it hard to error you're not able to make the truth other than simple because a simple educated man will be speaking it. Elijah Muhammad was a simple man and he made the truth simple I have a little bit more education but I'm still a simple plain teacher he said my will and his will are alike and I believe that that goes right to me and he said he wants every no good disbeliever off the face of the earth he said after this America will never rise to be an independent nation again she won't have the power that she had last year meaning every year from then her power would be diminished and if you watch America there was a time when she would fight you herself when she jumped into Vietnam and they beat her up from that day whenever a fight comes she tries to gather a lot of people except she's fighting Panama or Grenada or some little small place he said America is gone her money is gone there's no more silver no more gold after a while she may ask for copper the money is worthless right now the money has no value this used to be a silver certificate that used to say pay the bearer on demand one dollar in silver you can't get silver for it anymore you can't get gold for it it is the wealth of the country that's holding up the dollar he said soon you'll see money piled and burning in the streets there will be another medium of exchange not coming from this country mm. he said I warn you because I love you now listen to these words she will fight and continue to fight he mentioned Vietnam and other areas of Asia but the last fight will be in East Germany and there she will be destroyed now, I want you to stop with me a minute. I want to talk about East Germany. Y'all all right? Yes, you think East Germany and West Germany have united. They broke the wall down. But they're not united. East Germany has been 40 years under the communists and West Germany has been 40 years under American and Western democracy and these are apples and oranges and it's very difficult to produce the integration and if you look at America your president Lincoln I mean uh, <laughs> Lincoln your president Clinton went all out for Perez in Israel but the people in Israel rejected Perez and voted for Netanyahu Netanyahu comes in listen and he says quote there will never be a divided Jerusalem Jerusalem will forever be the capital 
of Israel. Arafat says, we want a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as the capital. Arafat and Netanyahu says, never. Netanyahu says, no more trading land for peace. So the words of Farrakhan now come back. Israel has not had any peace in 40 years. And she will never have any peace. Now, Jerusalem again will soon be surrounded by armies. And what does the scripture say? When Jerusalem is surrounded with armies, know that the end has come. It says, he says, if you look at Germany and you look at Russia, next Sunday there will be an election in Russia. America has sent billions of dollars over to Russia to make sure that Boris Yeltsin wins the election. He may win, he may not win, but the communists are rising again and they are sick of this Western style democracy and capitalism. And the hard liners that are rising want the return of the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, you see a breakup of the so-called Soviet Union and all of these tribes, if you want to call them that, the Croats, the Serbs, the Chechnyans, the Georgians, they're all at odds with each other and this conflagration is soon going to spread into Europe. Now many of you that were in the armed forces in Europe when they they broke the, the, the power of the Soviet Union. They called many of you out of Europe back to America, you that were in the army. And you don't have any job. But soon they're going to ask you to go back to Europe. I wouldn't do it if I were you. Oh, I want you to hear me now. You can do what you want to do. But if I were you, I'd get out of the army. You didn't hear me. Because I know you think that's your only employment. I said if I were you, I'd get out of that thing. Because what the enemy intends to do is use your bodies to keep him propped up. And you will be killed this time. You're not going to make it. They got something planned for her. Let me tell you more. The messenger said, you will go away in the thousands and you will return in the tens. And when you return, there'll be no such thing as an American government. This thing is going. I'm saying it now, and it's recorded. You can get it. I don't care where you publish it. But every word you're going to face. He said, all of America's possessions will be taken one by one. And all her fortifications will be destroyed. Her great armies poured into Asia and Europe will not return. You got some sons? You better tell them to learn how to reject a call from the president. Because if you obey him, rather than God, it's over. It's over. Look at this now. 
he said in the South Pacific the white man will be driven out soon now go look in Asia now the fastest growing economy in the world is where Asia Japan was broken Japan is back America is saying look we can't continue to bear the burden of protection for this area you must do something Japan says yeah Japan was the greatest shipbuilding nation in the world. They never wanted her to become militarily strong again, but now they need her. So she's building her army now. She's building her navy now. And shiploads of uranium were sent to Japan. I mean loads of it. And she said, oh, she's just going to build uh, for atomic energy. You can believe it if you want to. She has never forgotten. China is up. China is not playing. See, whenever America says something about China should do so and so, China, you watch China. She, she blasts back, woof, 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 woof. America say woof, woof. China say woof, woof, woof. Because the Chinese got a billion, 250 million, and they could lose the whole population of America, which is 250 million, and still have a billion left. The Koreans, oh, look at them if you want to. The brown man and the yellow man coming, baby. You can hang with whitey if you want to. But won't be nobody over there this time telling you same, same. You should have got that message. They will take you off this planet, brother. You will see them soon move throughout Asia. They'll take them out of Australia and out of New Zealand and out of the islands of the Pacific. His day is over. His day is done. The messenger said the Islamic world will be the ruler we are the people to rule in the next world. And that's why they are so afraid of Islam. It ain't that we are crazy fundamentalist people riding around with bombs. But Jesus was a Muslim. Moses and the prophets were Muslims. They all submitted their will to do the will of God. Islam is coming whether you want it or not. It will conquer the hearts and minds of the people, not with a sword, but because it's truth. He said, Turkey is going to emerge. And I was in Turkey. And I heard some talk. I ain't going to tell you what I heard. But no, I'll I tell you what you should know. <laughs> he said France will emerge. France is going to turn heels. She won't be with England and America. And he said that England is going to trick America into war. Boy, 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 boy. He said, white America will be destroyed mercilessly. Not even your own brother or sister will show mercy 
on you, meaning America. He said, it's not 40 years away. It's not 40 months. He said, preparation is being made to take her right now. Allah wants to save you. But our people don't want to be saved unless you save white people. Listen. He said, white people are asking today, can we be saved? Can we be Muslims? He said there was a white woman in the house on 48, 47 South Woodlawn that Friday night and she asked, can't some of us be saved? See? White folk got more sense than you. <laughs> when they hear this message, they know it's coming. They have been knowing it's coming. And white folk will beat you to the mosque if I let them in. We have to go and beg you. Will you come to the mosque, brother? If I sent word out next week that I'm teaching and all white people could come, you better get here early. Because there are white people who know that the end is in sight and all they want to know is can they be saved? And I'm going to tell you something, sisters. That's why white men are hitting on you so tough. You don't know what they're thinking. You think these white people really love you, don't you? They can talk so nice, can't they? Don't they talk better than we do to you? Don't they make it sound so sweet? Hello, Sadie. Sadie, you're so cute. <laughs> Let me open the door for you, Sadie. You know what they want? They want to get you pregnant. So that their seed will see the hereafter. And you walking around carrying white men's babies. And you don't even know that they say, ah, I made it in the hereafter. I know my time is up, but I mix my blood with her and I make it in the hereafter. Dumb woman. <laughs> Wait a minute. You ain't so smart. I'm almost there, brothers and sisters. A scarlet beast carrying a woman in purple. A harlot, see? He'd been working on his woman since she got out the caves. If you had seen her in the caves, you, you wouldn't even ask your dogs to go by there. But he worked on her. I mean, he worked on her. She's ready now. She's before you on the television with her little thin self. Why are you just fat? I don't know where you going with yourself. You're just going out of the picture. 
We have to have two cameras to take one picture. You're beginning to look like the nutty professor. While the white woman is in the gym on the treadmill. She old and wrinkled. <laughs> but she keeping that body fine so she can trap a fool. I'll tell you, just remind me if I forget to tell you how they're tricking you in the, at the end of my lecture, which would be in just a few more minutes, how they're tricking you to take you down with them. Now, brothers and sisters, the war that's building and the chastisement that is on now there are four great judgments that God is going to use. Rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. And if you look at the weather, you already know something is going on. When it rains, it's unusual rain. And the rain is coming down in torrents. And it is interfering with the foundation of the houses, tearing up the streets and the roads, huh? upsetting the railroad tracks and the, the steel uh, tracks that lay on the beds. Boy, God is after them. Now you've got these storms with these twisters coming out of them. So much so, till they put it on TV, twist, or in the movie, Twisters. I'm sure you went to see it while you twisted. Because you just as twisted as the twister. God is sending storms now. In Kentucky, 600 homes wiped out. Boom, 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 boom. Fire burning up tens of thousands of acres of land in the West. Drought. Farmers saying, I, I can't plant. It's too much water. I can't plant. There ain't no water. What does that mean for the price of food? You think Mickey D's is going to keep you healthy, baby? Pretty soon, big America is going to be hungry. It's written in your Bible. Go read it. God is striking at the earth now. He's striking at the cattle. The cattle are looking up at the sun, gritting their teeth, wondering, what have I done? You ain't send no water down. He's drying up the brooks and the rivers and the fish are lying stinking in the dry parched mud. He's coming after you, black man. America can't fight him, I'm telling you. He's kicking total backside. I love him. Man, I'm so glad God ain't no punk. See, you've been calling on God and you think you think God is some milk toast faggot. That you can do whatever you want to do and God ain't going to handle you. <laughs> oh no, brother. The God is gradually grinding this thing to a halt. Now the farmers can't farm too much rain or too little rain. Too much heat, too much sun. Then hail start falling. And I'm not talking about hail, little hail. But they're saying hail now that looks like softballs. 
But soon you're going to see hail like blocks of ice. Tan up your roofs and any, any one of you that are in the way just kill you. This is coming. He's treasured up snow as the book of Job said. It's going to be a good winter for you. If you can get out your house. You don't know what it's like to see so much snow till you got to dig your way out of your house. Look at the way he's been dealing with the temperature. One day in Chicago, it's in the 90s. And within six to eight hours, the temperature drops 30 degrees. He opens your pores up, then he fills you full of coal, and now you're out here. <laughs> I say, kill him, God. Kill him. They ain't no damn good. Kill him. We deserve it. We deserve it, man. And he's coming after you, boy. You, you like sex, huh? <laughs> Ain't no such thing as safe sex, man. Not when you promiscuous. He gonna age you into belief. Herpes, AIDS, syphilis, tuberculosis, all these diseases coming back and worse. He says, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that he's going to terrify you with insects. Now in California, they have drills going on with the police on how to handle the killer bees that will soon be in California. Look at you, man. You big, powerful man. Allah take a bee and knock you on your butt. Show you, you ain't got no juice, baby. You better submit. He terrified a whole stadium in there for a baseball game, and he sent grasshoppers in. And the grasshoppers were jumping all over the people they were all in distraction. They couldn't think about the game they was running to get out of the... You like sports events? Be careful. Be careful. They were sitting up in San Francisco, or Oakland, one of them two, in the stadium and an earthquake hit. That was the end of the game. <laughs> Ain't nobody playing no more. God, all he had to do was shake it just a little. And you haven't seen earthquakes like you're going to see it, brother. And let me tell you something. If you ever have been in one, it's a terrifying thing. You see this earth that's under your foot? That thing is firm. And you, it's so firm, you believe it'll always be that way. But when that earth starts shaking, baby, and there is a chapter in the Quran called The Shaking. And it ain't talking about what we do in the disco and that. No, no, no. It's the earth just shaking. And when you see this, the stuff you're going to see will make babies turn gray-headed. That's how terrible it's going to be. And also the Quran says, the violence of the people. Now let me tell you about that. See, you brothers, and I have to say this to you because it just has to be said. You know, Allah loves you and wants to save you. But you are so evil till you are now doing the white man's job of killing each other. So since you like to kill each other, then God 
is going to give you your own blood to drink. And this is what's coming. He's going to turn the white folk that you love loose on you. See, they are real killers. They ain't no pop gun shooting, kill, and then get tired. These white folk love to kill black people. Now they start burning your churches. But look at the mind that's come into the police force now, into the sheriff's department, into the FBI. See, all of them think the same way as the Aryan nation and the free men and the militia. They don't like no niggas. So since you like to kill each other, then God will cause them to kill you. And that's written in the Bible. You can look for it. It ain't going to be long now. Just a few days from now. It says here that because they wouldn't hear Moses, he caused them to be bitten by fiery serpents. Fiery serpents only mean angry white folk. And when the white man won, the Republicans won, the headline the next day was angry white men. What are they angry about? They're angry because their world is coming down and they see you rising. You got to make a change, brothers. Sisters, you got to make a change. Now the final thing is the destruction. Now we're just about finished. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us of a giant mothership that is made like the universe, a sphere and spheres within spheres. The white folk call them unidentified flying objects. He's coming out with a movie to let you know what's about to come down. But he put it in film and I said, I'm not going to let him give you a false version. I'm going to tell you what the real deal is so that you're not going to be tricked. This is no dudes from out in Mars. No. The life that is on Mars is germane to that atmosphere. You can't live on another planet. The water is different. The atmosphere is different. The vegetation is different. You are born of this atmosphere, this water, this vegetation, and this is the only planet you can survive on. You can visit those planets in a contraption, but don't come out. You can't make it. Ain't nobody coming from Mars to visit you. They want to give the credit to some Martians when it's really God and the host of his angels that have been prepared to wipe this nation from the face of the earth before the white man came into existence. Now let me tell you how it's going to be. As the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us. Ezekiel in the Old Testament saw wheels that looked like a cloud by day, but a pillar of fire by night. That was a vision that Ezekiel had. Now that vision is reality. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that that wheel was built on the island of Nippon, which is now called Japan, by some of the original scientists. It took $15 billion in gold at that time to build it. It is made of the toughest steel. 
America had, does not know yet the steel, the composition to make an instrument like it. It is a circular plane. And the Bible says of it that it never makes turns. The wheel didn't make turns. Because of its circular nature, it can stop and then shoot in all directions at thousands of miles of speed an hour. Listen, listen now, listen. He said there are 1,500 of these small wheels in this mother wheel, which is a half a mile by a half mile. It's like a small human-built planet. Each one of these planes carry three bombs. The bombs that are used on these planes, and by the way, these planes are not new. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. They have even markings in areas of the earth where they make markings of these planes in ancient writings because they're not new to the original man. White folk ain't the first people to fly. We flew before there was a white man. You can take it or leave it. How in the world could he fly first when we're the ones that gave him the mathematics on which he is flying? We were asleep to allow the new man to rule. Now look, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the wheels, we had these planes thousands of years ago, and these are the planes that we use to set up mountains on the earth. The Quran says it like this, we have raised mountains on the earth lest it convulse with you. Now how do you raise a mountain? And why? What is the purpose of a mountain? Brothers and sisters, you ever try to balance a tire? How do they balance the tire? They put a weight here and a weight there to keep the tire balanced. That's how the earth is balanced with mountain ranges. He says that we have a, a type of bomb that when it strikes the earth, it has a drill on it. And this drill is timed to go into the earth and explode at the height that you wish the mountain to be. If you wish to take the mountain up a mile, two miles, three miles, you time the drill to go three miles in, then explode, and it brings up the mountain. He said, we use these planes to make mountains on the earth. These bombs that this plane has are timed to go one mile down, and they will bring up a mountain one mile high, but it will destroy everything within a 50 square mile radius. The white man writes in his above top secret memos on the UFOs, he sees them around their military installations like their spine. America can't shoot it down. She's talking about going out in space and Reagan talking about space wars and all that mess. See, but the people on those wheels, they tune up on you. In other words, if you're thinking about it, they know it as you think it. And before you can make your move, the plane moves. Yeah. That mother wheel is a dreadful looking thing. And guess what? I brought you some newspaper clippings that I want you to check. 
so that you won't think Farrakhan is talking mess. See, the white man knows that his end is near. Let me tell you, here, brother, in the Washington Times, it was also in the Washington Post, January 2nd, 1987, listen to this. A veteran pilot whose UFO sighting was confirmed on radar screens said that the thing was so enormous that his Japan Island Airlines cargo plane was tiny compared to this mysterious object. Captain Kenju Terahi, who's a 29-year veteran Japanese Airlines pilot, said there were two other small unidentified objects, smaller than his cargo carrier, that did not appear on the radar. Those were two of the little ships. Mr. Teraki, his co-pilot and flight engineer, all told Federal Aviation Administration investigators that they saw UFO lights. Now in the book of Ezekiel, it talks about the different colors, the amber, the red, the different colors that the lights would be on the wheels. He said they were flying parallel and then suddenly they approached very close. Mr. Terachi 47, who requested and received FAA permission to take whatever evasive action was necessary to avoid the UFO that appeared for a time on FAA and Air Force radar and on the radar screen in the cockpit of Japan Airlines Flight 1628. Mr. Terachi spoke to United Press International this week describing the UFO incident of November 17th that was revealed by the FAA on Monday. Now, the FAA says it cannot explain strange flashing lights that spooked the crew members of the JAL 747 cargo plane as it flew over northern Alaska. Now the man was asked to draw what he saw. And he drew, oh, I'm, I know you can't see it from there, huh? but I'd like to have all of this blown up so you can see it. It's like, he called it like a giant walnut with something round under the bottom and on the top. He said it was like two large aircraft carriers in length. That's a half a mile. Well, he also said it looked like a city in the sky. And that's what's in the Bible, brother. I saw a city come down from heaven. <laughs> All right, let me go on. Here's some more clippings I thought you'd like to know in case you thought Elijah Muhammad was making up stories. Here is a book that we're going to get. I want Brother Fontaine to get this. It's called The Worldwide UFO Cover-Up, Above Top Secret by Timothy Good with a foreword from the former chief of defense staff. See, white folks been knowing that something is up there that they can't handle. Now look at this. I want to read you something that Jimmy Carter said. Remember President Carter? Yes, sir. The peanut farmer from Georgia? <laughs> Listen to President Carter's words. During his election campaign in 1976, Jimmy Carter revealed that he had seen a UFO at Leary, Georgia in 1969 together with witnesses 
prior to giving a speech at the local Lions Club. Now this is a quote from the president. It was the darndest thing I've ever seen. It was big. It was very bright. It changed colors and it was about the size of the moon. We watched it for 10 minutes, but none of us could figure out what it was. One thing's for sure, I'll never make fun of people who say they've seen unidentified objects in the sky. Now listen to this. Carter said, if I become president, I'll make every piece of information this country has about UFO sightings available to the public and the scientists. And although it says President Carter did all he could to fulfill his election pledge, he was thwarted. And it was clear that NASA had a hand in blocking his attempts to reopen investigations. Now, brothers and sisters, they know that the end is close. And so now, in the movies, they're going to make it like fiction. But it's based on something real. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that mother plane is so powerful that with sound reverberating in the atmosphere, just with a sound, she can crumble buildings. And the final act of destruction will be, listen, Allah will make a wall out of the atmosphere over and around North America. You can see it but you can't penetrate it. And he said he will cut a shortage in gravity and a fire will start from 13 layers up and burn right down, burning atmosphere. And when it gets to the earth, burn everything. It will take 300 and 10 years to burn and 690 years to cool off. And in the book of Revelations, it says, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication with her shall lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. This fire is for us. It's prepared for men and stones. Stones represent the hard-hearted people of this wicked world and for men who refuse to change and come to God. Now, in my conclusion, Allah says, we have sent death among them and we will not be overcome. There will be three hard years, believers, that we will have to endure. But one year will be harder than all the rest. And the Bible says if those days were not shortened, for God's elect's sake, not one soul would be left alive on the earth. You're going to witness an awful lot of bloodshed. You will witness famine like you have never seen. And the scripture says that you will look at your little fat babies with the thought in mind of eating your own children. That's how terrible the famine is going to be. All of this does not have to happen. That's the beauty. I couldn't leave you without saying that there's still hope.
The enemy is so angry with God over his growing loss of prestige and power that he's determined to take every one of us down with him. He set the white male on you and he set the white female on you. He knew that God wanted you to separate and out of his rebelliousness he said let's force integration. Integration is nothing more than a trick. They never intend to really integrate you into power. But they want to trick you into thinking that they have changed. And some of you silly brothers and sisters, you think, well, oh, it's, it's all over. The white man is really reformed. He's better now. So God is going to show you he's the same as he was 6,000 years ago. That man is so wicked. Knowing that God would give him a respite if he would do justice by you. Instead of doing justice by you, he's tricking you. Oh, man. Look at him. Look at him. Just look at him, brothers and sisters. This man is so wicked. Rather than give you up so that you can do God's work and repent of his evil against you and the Native Americans, he would rather kill both people. He's on the reservations right now. Uh, Sister Juanetta Lone Wolf, one of our dear, dear Native American friends. He's killing the Native American women, sterilizing them so that they can't produce Native babies. They're filled with alcohol and drugs, and the type of food that they eat is breaking them down. Instead of giving them justice, he gives them death. Instead of giving you justice, look at this. He moves factories out of America, out of the inner cities. Who lives in the inner city? You and the Hispanic people and poor white people. He's crushing you from getting a job with a decent wage. And then he sends drugs in. And then he brings guns in. Now he got you fighting over territory. Nigga, you can't sell no drugs in this territory. And now you're killing each other over drugs. So God is so angry with you for what you're doing and you know better that's the thing. You would call him brother and kill him at the same time. You know better. And so if you don't change now, God will cut him loose on us. And I'm telling you, brother, you're going to break into some riots and rebellions. And he's coming in with these helicopter gunships. You see what he moved up on the, on the land of the free men? He don't want to kill them. But the longer that thing goes, the worse he looks. Either they surrender, but if it were you, oh, brother, you didn't waste no time. Brothers, Leave the white woman alone. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Go get you your black woman. And be a good man. 
to her. Don't let the Caucasian woman trick you. She'll be sweet to you, kind to you, tricking you to stay with them so you can taste what God has planned for them. Now, I'd like to show you in conclusion how we can get out of it. It's a very narrow chance, very narrow. Let's calculate some time on this last six. Since Master Farad Muhammad came in 1930, 60 years from 1930 is 1990, right? Yes, if it's not to exceed 70 years, then the year 2000 would be the end. So if you calculate from the time of Master Farad's coming, you don't have but five more years of grace. But I think the time begins from the time he establishes his servant, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. If that is true, you got four more years added to that to take you to the year 2004. Now, the enemy expects destruction by the year 2000. So it's 1986, 96, you got uh, 97, 98, 99, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. You got eight years to make up your mind and don't wait. Because if it's 34 and 60 is 94, then you in the last 10 years and it could happen at any time. What are you gonna do? You in the valley of decision. What are you gonna do? You gonna clean up your life? I'm not asking you if you want to join me. You can if you want to. But if you're in the church, you better make the church right. Because judgment is gonna begin at the so-called house of God. Wherever you are, you're going to have to clean it up. You can be a homosexual and come to God. He will accept you. But fight, brothers. Fight hard to be a man. You can overcome all forms of sin. But it's struggle. We are adulterers and fornicators and drug addicts and liars and thieves and pimps and hustlers. Whatever we're doing that we know is wrong, we got to straighten it out, man. Straighten it up. If you don't, it's on you. I hope and pray that I have made the message clear. There is no need for me to teach much longer because I think that the more I talk to you, you take it for sport and entertainment. 
there is no connection that you have to me that can save you. My children can't be saved by claiming me as the father. My grandchildren can't be saved by saying Farrakhan is my grandpa. I'm not the father of any of your men. If you don't relate to me in the message that I bring, then you are not related to me. I can't save you. I love you, but I can't save you. You have to try to save yourself. And I would say to all of you that have known the word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you know what he wants. You know what he said God would be pleased with and what he said God would not be pleased with. Then you stop playing with yourself. Get it right. It's clear. Now, if you love your people, you say you love them, why won't you help me warn them? See, the best of you will come from a word. The rest of you will come from a whipping. I was the kind of child that my mom didn't have to beat me that much. I could see the strap. And I knew she would use that strap. So I was going to get my life in order. My brother, bless him, <laughs> he was a hard fella. He could take them whoopings. And she could give them. And she wore his backside out. He was not the kind of fella who would learn from others' mistakes. He had to make them himself. Well, I would like to be the kind of son that learns from the mistakes of others and profits from my own. I would love to see you all make it. And I told you, maybe the last time, not last week, but the time before that, that I spoke to you, I mentioned that experience that I had with the wheel. And I told you that I was told that I had one more thing to do and then I could come to the wheel again. I'm not trying to make nothing of myself. But I was literally weeping the other day thinking about you and wondering if I went away, what would I find on my return? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been gone for 21 years. His grandson that he loved so well is gone. His ministers, his secretaries, They're gone. Family members gone back into disbelief. Grandchildren in prison for drugs. Great grands messed up. What will I find? What condition will you be in? If I go, will I see you again? And the book says, they saw him going away in a cloud. And he returned in like manner in the clouds of heaven, having great power. It means he went in a plane that looked like a cloud. And he returned in a like manner 
But I can guarantee you this, that the power of America has to be broken before God will reveal any new word to you, lest he would use it to stay here a little longer. So my dear family, I thank you for listening. And I hope that you will take these words to heart. Go out and talk among yourselves about it. Pick up your books and start reading and studying. And above all, keep abreast of the daily news. For the news was written thousands of years and the newspapers will show you how far advanced the prophets were. May Allah bless you to save your life and the lives of our children from the snares of this ever wicked and evil enemy of God. I pray that he will bless my family as I pray for you all the time. I pray that you will make it. But I don't want you to think that connection to me is enough. You have to do something to be worthy to get out of God's intention against this world. I thank Allah for having known you. And I pray that Allah will bless you to be in that number when the righteous take possession of the earth. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar All praises due to Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan Brothers and sisters, will you hold your seat for a minute please? Don't leave